So today we're sitting in a 2022 Hyundai Santa Fe and the latest firmware update came out for the GPS, the UI for the the radio, a um, whole bunch of other things. Mainly though, what I was mostly interested in was getting a full screen Android Auto experience. Uh, the stock firmware that was on here from when I first bought the car, the interface stopped over here and then Hyundai would have its own widget on this side over here, which it wasn't necessary. So we'll just jump right into it. Uh, I'm gonna provide links in the description below, but the first thing you'll need to do is download the Hyundai updater software, totally free. It's gonna add, once it's installed in the machine, I did it on a Windows 11 machine. I'm sure it works on Mac as well, but so it'll ask you what type of car you have, what year it is, so on and so forth, super, super simple. It'll then download all the installation files for the GPS and the firmware and everything else uh, on locally to your disk. From there, it'll ask you to put in a thumb drive. Thumb drive will be at least 60, a 64 gig variant drive. Um, it then copies everything over. It structures the drive accordingly, so we'll format it, and it plops all the data onto there. All right, so from there, we jump in the car. The car is not running, as you can see. First thing on this car, we open it up. And in this port right here, the USB port, I plugged in the USB drive. Uh, there are two ways to do it. So on mine, it actually came up immediately saying, hey, there's new software, would you like to install it? Um, I have read instances though, where people have said that didn't necessarily happen for them. So if you go into the general and it shows you all your software and your, you know, your firmware versions and all the other good stuff, you just simply click update and it immediately references the data on that drive that you plugged in there and that's it you just sit back and let it do its thing people have said it takes 25 35 minutes on this car because i've never updated it i'm guessing it took over an hour um i didn't have to leave the car running it actually tells you right off the bat you don't have to have the car on it'll just do it silently in the background um so it sat there for like an hour uh, it does give you progress. It reboots a whole bunch of times. It flashes the dashboard a few times. It does warn you that you can still drive the car, but certain features will be disabled, mainly backup camera and things of that nature. Uh, I'm going to try to demo this. The Android Auto feature that is full screen now works, which is really, really cool. Let me see if I can make that work while I'm filming. Okay, so I have my phone that I'm using to film right now plugged into that drive. Android Auto... I'm gonna select that. And here we go. So now we have the full screen set up. And if I click one of the screens, actually if I go here, it'll pivot it. So the only one that goes full, full screen is maps. So if I click maps, that's a nice thing. Before it used to take up half or maybe three quarters of the screen, which is really ridiculous. Uh, maps will always be the primary focus. And then if I wanna to listen to Android music, or I'm sorry, um, Amazon music, I could then, Multitask it back here, and I've got the same layout widgets down here. I can check my menus, all that other good stuff. But now it actually uses the entire screen, which is, unfortunately, it was disabled before, and that's so stupid. But now it's updated. A couple of the cool things to note on the radio itself, they did change the UI. I'm, I'm keeping the radio off, so I don't get YouTube licensing infringements here. But the cool thing is now the user interface has changed. So gone would be the tube radio icons and stuff. But now you actually get the updates with the wallpaper of the song you're listening to, all the detailed information, and then like this faux background that goes with it, which is kind of slick. Um, I like it. I do feel for some reason, it actually changes stations way faster now where before I had like this weird lag. Um, I'll play around with it more and see, but yeah, that's it. That's the update. It's actually pretty substantial. And also in the navigation system, I'm no longer getting that update saying that, you know, I'm, I'm way out of date and a lot of my roads and maps are non-existent and whatnot. But if you have any questions with it, let me know. I've just done it. Is it really, really painful, uh, painless? And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have with this.